Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, good morning. Or, I mean, it's almost 11 here, so probably, what? How many time zones are in Europe? Don't tell me. Um, all right, so the UK, I think, is five hours ahead. And then somehow France is six hours ahead, even though it's right underneath it. And then Moscow is like seven or something like that, but... All right, it's not morning for you guys. All right, let's go. Hope you guys are doing well. If not, that sucks. It'll be good soon. Let's do it. How did England uh, colonize America? Let's do it. If you're new to the channel, hello, my name is Connor. Give me a break. First video of the day. Might be a little tired. Uh, I like to learn about history through YouTube recommendations. The original link to the video will be at the top of the description below. Right below that is the link to the Discord. Click on it. It'll send you right over there. Join the party. The family. More the merrier. Makes it easier for me to interact with you guys. Create that watering hole of, uh, you know, atmosphere of history around YouTube and Discord. Love to have you. Pull up a chair. More the merrier. Let's do it. If you're not ready to learn, get the hell out of here. Wrong class. Get out country across the globe is one of the history of the colonization of North America is one of the most well-known formations of any country across the globe Spain France and Great Britain all played crucial roles in the development of what is now the influential United States of America but today most people particularly remember the I just want to say, I, I always forget, um, because I, I'm used to seeing a, a map of North America with the boundaries of Canada and the U.S., and I always think of Maine as like a peninsula for some stupid reason, and whenever I see it without borders, I, I, I realize there's just this giant peninsula that juts out with Nova Scotia and Maine and uh, Quebec. Colonial efforts of the English, but today... Most people there particularly remember the colonial efforts of the English above all else. Because they won. So, how did the English colonize America? To understand Rude how, force. it first behooves us to understand why. How and far Bermuda is. Sorry. How. It first behooves us to understand why. Well. A few factors were significant in determining the reason for England's colonial efforts. A summary of these justifications can be found in the 1584 work of Richard Hakluyt, known as the Discourse on Western Planning. Never heard of him. Honestly, I love when there's a name that, like, it doesn't even ring a bell. So I'm learning about someone new. Hakluyt's claim on Western Planning. Haklut claims that English colonization of the New World would be not only to the benefit of England, but furthermore, to the benefit of God. He made a common argument is. that Protestant England needed to rescue North America from the Catholic world and the current hold that Spain had over much of the continent. Of course, England and Spain had more than just a religious rivalry. But the point was often a compelling one nonetheless. Furthermore, Haklut acknowledged the obvious economic and social possibilities that New World colonies would provide. Since there was currently an overabundance of job and landless vagabonds plaguing England, Haklut stated that the establishment of a colony would provide more land and job opportunities for these homeless men and women. A lot of land. Moreover, the expansion of trade alone would produce great profit for England, and the resources the New World may provide were vast. These points made by Richard H. Clute were echoed. Can I just say, isn't it crazy how England got the U.S., Canada, and Australia? Obviously, it lost the U.S. pretty quick, but still English-speaking. It's just crazy how this little island 
it's kind of the lingua franca of the day. I, I know even in aviation, like in air traffic control um, speak, no matter what airport in the world, they use English for obvious reasons, safety of people, uh, pilots speaking the same language. But just the fact, in Spain, this goes for uh, Spanish too, in that these two countries just got giant swaths of Earth's territory to be speaking their language. I think is fascinating and awesome. Oh, throughout England, and combines with the visible success of the Spanish beginning to produce envy from the English, a decision to enter the new world was made. Queen Elizabeth had chosen to opt for a less typical route of joining the colonial world by sponsoring sailors known as sea dogs that participated in a form of piracy identified as privateering. Drake. Two such sailors by the names of John Hawkins and Francis Drake were sent by the Queen to wreak havoc on the, what was the other guy? Hawkins and privateering. Two such sailors by the names of John Hawkins and Francis John Drake Hawkins. were sent by the Queen to wreak havoc on the Spanish in America. The privateers, and the latter in particular, plundered Spanish ships and raided caravans even as far as the coast of Peru. This unprompted attack greatly angered Spain, and the discord between the nations drastically increased even further after England had the Catholic Mary, Queen of Scots, executed in 1587. The following year, King Philip II of Spain decided to retaliate in what would become the largest scale invasion to yet occur with the goal of annihilating the British Navy. Sorry, the retaliate for killing... ...of Scots executed in 1587. The following year, King Philip II of Spain decided to retaliate in what would become the okay. largest scale invasion... I love how... I love how, uh, especially with Great Britain's case, um, so France and Spain, I'm thinking here. So the American Revolution, um, Scotland, I'm not sure if they helped out Ireland or whatnot, but it seems like whenever there's, I'm sure this is true for every nation at the time and even now, whenever there's just a chance to maybe even not go directly to war with England, but, like, you see a part of England, like, rebelling, or a colony rebelling, all, to just, like, give aid and just hurt uh, England as much as possible. I'm sure it happens to not just England, but it, it just stands out. ...to yet occur with the goal of annihilating the British Navy. They failed pretty and badly, right? 18,000 soldiers, 8,000 sailors, and 130 ships. So is this the the birth Spaniards of the made British Navy? no mistake in targeting the British Navy, which played an extremely crucial role in the nation's trade and colonial power. While the Spanish ships cool notably picture. outnumbered the British, the latter were better equipped with more suitable ships for such a clash and quickly beat back their attacker. The Spanish fleet one had for such a is important the British. So I noticed at this point with Spanish ships, they're very, they have this very high inclined, this steep kind of like captain's quarters, like the, what is it? The stern of the ship is, is very much inclined. And um, I'm just trying to learn more about... Uh, history of uh, shipbuilding. The latter were better equipped with more suitable ships for such a clash and quickly beat back their attacker. The Spanish fleet had to turn back, heading for the Netherlands to gather reinforcements, but an unexpected storm ripped through the remaining Armada ships, leaving the English as the clear victor. It's like uh, the uh, Mongol invasion of Japan. Now, it was time to focus on the colonies. Amikaze. As the 16th Colony time. century came to a close, I'm talking a lot. some attempts had already been made by England to establish colonies in North America, but so far, none had succeeded. Sir Humphrey Gilbert was one of the men in charge of such efforts and had hoped to create a colony in Newfoundland, but had miserably failed. 
John White, in 1587, had also made a similar attempt Roanoke? on Roanoke Island alongside Failed. 150 other English colonists, but the colony quickly ran out of supplies and resources. White returned to England, where he intended only to gather what he needed for his colony before heading back, but he ended up trapped in his native land for over a year. Spoiler alert, they ended up getting abducted by aliens. Due to the current situation brought about by the Spanish Armada, when White was finally able to return to Roanoke Island, he found his colony completely abandoned abducted. and his efforts in vain. When the 17th century began, with still no solid All right, so English I think you guys have taught me some stuff. So this is the Isle of White. This is the Isle of Man. Right? Colony in the Americas, Queen Elizabeth passed away in 1603, leaving the future of England's colonial efforts in the hands of King James. The following year, peace was made between England and Spain, and in 1606, King James established the Virginia Company, beginning a new wave of efforts to find colonial success in America. Three ships, in particular the Discovery, the Susan Constant. This is the first thing you're going to learn in American history as a little kid is who George Washington, who George Washington is, and you're going to learn about Jamestown and the Pilgrims. That is going to be American History 101 when you're learning in class. And the Godspeed set off for the East Coast. Arriving at the James River in spring of 1607, the colonists reached the fairly uninhabited region of Virginia, which they would shortly name Jamestown. This would become the first permanent English colony in America. Contemporarily, King James had also granted a charter to the Plymouth Company, Good. but their Popham colony was disappointingly short-lived. The Jamestown colonists did fare better than those from Popham, given that their colony didn't collapse, but the endeavor was still a harrowing one nonetheless. By 1617, only 300... Hundred and fifty one of the initial seventeen thousand colonists remained alive. Rough. The men had been widely unprepared for the life of hard physical labor, and the land itself was not as easy to utilize as they had hoped. Many starved while others fell ill, and if it had not been for the help of the local Native American tribe, known by the colonists as the Powhatan Confederacy, the English may have all but perished. Powhatan's roughly 10,000 strong tribe was incredibly efficient at utilizing the difficult terrain for hunting and farming throughout the Chesapeake. With more than enough food and potentially benefit to gain from the colonists... You know what would be a cool, uh, you know, alternate history hub, great channel? You know what would be a cool, I just thought about this, an alternate history um, video would be, what, what if smallpox was never a thing like what if uh disease like bringing I, i'm really curious like i wonder how much longer the uh, natives would have stood out uh fighting against european encroachment had smallpox and just a uh, disease from the newcomers uh that the natives weren't immune to yet uh wasn't a thing i, I wonder how long uh that would have lasted and how history might have changed Physically, no small pox. The natives Smoke, were fairly small welcoming pox. and greatly assisted the sickly Englishmen in their first winter. In the years to come, though, matters were not so simple. The English continued to starve and perish from disease, even despite help from the natives, as 400 new settlers arrived in Jamestown in 1609. As the general well-being of the colony continued on a downward spiral, their relationship with the natives also began to deteriorate. Occasional guerrilla wars started to break out between the colonists and Powhatan's tribe, and the English were still starving. The fate of Jamestown seemed scarcely hopeful. No major improvement appeared until 1614, 
At which point, the daughter of Powhatan, Pocahontas, married an English colonist by the name of John Rolfe. This at least began to ease tensions between the English and natives. The young colony also started to see some new changes Colors in of the leadership wind. and the discovery of what would be their savior, tobacco. The Jamestown colonists were rescued by a boom in demand, being native to the New World and immensely popular from the start of its first exports to Europe. Within 40 years, the Jamestown exports were amassing 15 native. The Jamestown colonists were rescued by a boom in demand, being native to the New World and immensely popular from the start of its first exports to Europe. Within 40 years, the Jamestown exports were amassing 15 million pounds per year. The colony had suddenly gone from a dwindling, starving group of migrants to a rapidly growing colonial power in need of more men for the increasing number of jobs. So I'm assuming the natives grew and smoked tobacco. And then like one time at a party, they just like let an English person try it, try it probably. And that spelled doom for the uh, south western coast of Africa. New market was providing. Not just tobacco. As Jamestown's Sugarcane. success kept building, the colonists began expanding the English um, territory beyond its original borders, which unfortunately brought them back into conflict with the natives. Powhatan's brother succeeded the chief upon his death in 1622 and vowed to rid his land of the English. On March 22nd, 1622, he and his tribe attacked the colony. Bring it on! And massacred 347 colonists in a single day. This, however, uh, in the minds of the not. English, justified years of fierce brutality. The new method of how the Oi. English would continue to colonize America was vastly different than how their competition, both the French and Spanish, had done the same. For the English, they had received a bit of practice to sharpen the skills they would use in America, back when they had begun their efforts to take Ireland from the native Catholics. As the English decided that they no longer needed to put much effort into coexisting or assimilating the natives into their new colonies, they began utilizing violence against the native people to seize their land and take control. And between war and disease, it wasn't long before the Native Americans had been disastrously affected. There was also a building distinction in the eyes of the colonists between themselves and other peoples, which made them even more determined to establish an English dominance throughout the North Dutch. America. And as their positive view of the natives quickly decayed, the pre-existing supremacy of positive dominance throughout North America. Roger Williams. And as their positive view of the natives quickly decayed, the pre-existing supremacy of English Protestantism over the Spanish Catholics in the minds of the former had now stretched beyond religion, and they had the power to enforce these ideas. The English also had the power and means to establish more colonies with even hold on, hold on, hold on. Catholic. Sorry. The I'm not sorry. The pre-existing supremacy of English Protestantism over the Spanish Catholics in the minds of the former had now stretched beyond religion, and they had the power to enforce these okay. ideas. The English also had the power and means to establish more colonies with even greater success than they had so far achieved. Eventually, Virginia, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Connecticut, South Carolina, North Carolina, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and lastly Georgia would make up the English 13 colonies, which would later form the United States of America. If it had not been for the newfound tobacco industry in the original colony, it's likely that the English would have never been able to colonize North America permanently, and the pure demoralization may have prevented any further success or even attempts at trying again. But instead, the English were able to establish multiple booming colonies whilst also bringing an impressive profit for the crown, and boasting enormous economic success. Make sure you subscribe to our awesome video. 
Awesome, awesome video. Uh, I'm gonna look at a. Uh, ooh, that's good. That one, but another one as well. Limited edition. Um, knowledge here. Great videos. I'll be back with another video soon. Hope you guys are doing well. If not, that sucks. You'll be good soon. See you next time, guys.